So one of the reasons to plant plants into trays into a greenhouse is because you can control the conditions, both for fast and uniform germination and emergence and ideal conditions. It's easy to fertilize plants when they're in a little tray stacked 60 together. It's easy to keep them nice and warm in a greenhouse. It's easier to do foliar feeds or baby them in any way that you want to baby them. So a lot of growers in greenhouses will do, especially in the spring or in conditions that aren't naturally ideal, will put bottom heat, i.e. a heat mat. We have spent probably too much money on these little heat mats that fit two trays at a time or four trays at a time, that the classic 10 by 20, regardless of the cell size is what I'm referring to. Two trays at a time, four trays at a time, six trays at a time. We probably have enough of those heat mats to fit 60 trays on at 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 bucks per little mat, we started getting kind of grumpy about it. And eventually we built our own custom heat mats, which don't work amazing, but they work acceptably. Essentially what we did was we took some mesh that is used for bottom heating in a house or a kitchen. What is that called? whatever that's called. We put that in the greenhouse and we put some aluminum, which transfers heat, really thin sheet metal on top and just sort of cinched it down and created our own, our own heat mats, just so we had more heat and it was a lot cheaper. It doesn't get them quite as hot as the heat mats do, but it's good enough to still help with uniformity and quickness of emergence. The other thing you can do which is really helpful and kind of specialized, but not that difficult actually, is to create a germination chamber. You can buy them, they're ridiculously expensive or just make some version of your own. Essentially, it's just an insulated box with some shelving that will work for you and your trays uh, to fit the number of trays you need, to have the heat you need. You know, every, every crop has its own range of ideal conditions for germination and emergence. Peppers are the classical one that really like that heat. Um, but outside of the ideal threshold or ranges, you know, either too high or too low, things go slower, they go into thermal dormancy, whatever it is. So the whole point of a germination chamber is to be able to control conditions to help with uniform and quick germination and emergence. Now germination chambers don't classically have light in them. So the main thing with them is to make sure those conditions are within or at that ideal range for as much of the day as possible so that they go quickly. Because as soon as they emerge, if they don't emerge uniformly, there's no light in there. So within 12 hours to 24 hours, the plants start to get really, really, really leggy. If you've ever put a plant into pitch black darkness, you know what I'm talking about. So if you're not gonna use heat mats, I'd recommend a germination chamber. Let's head over and look at ours and maybe talk about some of the benefits and drawbacks to the one we built. So here's our germination chamber. It's very space efficient and does a decent job, but if I were to have to do this again, I wouldn't do it the same way. This is set up to be able to fit 240 trays at a time, which is a lot for a six by eight box essentially or an eight by ten whatever it is exactly and every layer is you know it's a custom built redwood rack with hog panel we we just cut the hog panel to size put it in there but then realized we should have realized this before that the trays don't slide very well so we we just use this really thin industrial plastic in here that's just set on top of these and and the usability of that part of it is really easy you just put the trays in and you slide them right in However, the roof's not very high, so for an average size dude like me, who I'm only 5'10", 5'11", it's not comfortable. Um, so we try to get the shorter people in here for loading of trays. The other thing, you know, we just repurposed an old box truck. Ironically, this, this used to be our delivery, delivery box truck, and when the truck died, we harvested the bed off the back 
and it's not well insulated, so it can get too hot on hot days in here and on a cold spring night in March, even with, we don't have the heaters in here right now, but even with two heaters going, it's not gonna be in that ideal temperature. We did install insulation in here, but it was hard to get it uniform in here. They're just with the way the truck is set up and you know we only installed, it looks like quarter inch or half inch, in, half inch insulation. So the things that I would do better would be to insulate it better and make it taller and make it so the aisles slightly wider too. But, you know, using what you've got, you know, we always encourage farmers to do that. Use what you've got. This works. We use a couple fans in here for airflow. So we've got these heaters that are blowing hot air into here, but because of the way this is set up, it's hard to get great airflow in here. So we end up with pockets. And the pockets mean, once again, you're, you're, we're really wanting these things to germinate and emerge pretty much you're pulling them out of here within 72 hours. So if you've got a cold pocket that's, you know, eight, 10 degrees cooler, that one might be 12 hours behind, which means you're, the plants are getting leggy or you're having to pull out things in stages, which is fine. That's what we end up doing is we'll go in twice a day and pull things out during that kind of critical third, fourth day. For someone who's smaller, once again, just doing an acre, I think I'd probably just buy the heat mats we ended up doing this, you know, we use this for vegetables. We use this for hemp stuff. Uh, we've used this, you know, when the greenhouse is jam packed full of starts. And it, you know, the, the greenhouse can fit 80, 100, maybe 800 trays. And this can fit another 230. So in this little tiny space, when the greenhouse is packed full, it provides you three days of buffer um, for greenhouse, greenhouse bench space. So it also is, is an, an addition or an arm of the greenhouse, if you will, just in terms of space when things get, get packed full. One of the last things to consider when controlling conditions in the greenhouse is how much light or heat your, your plants are getting, both during germination and emergence and after. We have these pieces of shade cloth over a portion of the greenhouse, specifically the portion of the greenhouse with germinating plants, since we're not using the germination chamber right now. And that keeps the plants that are germinating, especially during the day, within a better range for their ideal conditions for germination. Most trays that we grow in and that uh, commercial growers are in are black. There are some white styrofoam options, uh, speedling trays, which work fine and better in terms of not retaining as much heat. But essentially the problem that this is trying to solve is black trays absorb heat and heat up soil. I've stuck a little thermometer into soil on a 80 degree day, great conditions outside, and the soil is 104 degrees in seeds that haven't emerged yet. And in, for seedlings that just have emerged, same thing, 104 degrees, even with the soil being uniformly wet. And that creates a problem of thermal dormancy. Thermal dormancy is when the seed gets too hot and goes dormant and doesn't germinate and doesn't emerge. So ideal conditions for most seeds, broadly speaking, are 70 to 85 degrees for emergence. Below 70 degrees, some things like brassicas, broccoli, cauliflower, kale do fine still at 65 degrees. We'll do fine at 75 degrees as well. Other things like peppers and tomatoes, you know, you'll see a 90% reduction. You know, with the, with the cannabis and hemp, it seems like they really like that 75 to 80 degree window. They like it to be consistent. Ideally, it's that, you know, uh, those temperatures in the nighttime as well, as we talked about with the germ chamber. But we set up these shade cloths on the greenhouse to make sure that when things are germinating and emerging and young, that their roots aren't getting too hot and it's not inhibiting germination. We probably made a mistake with the type of shade cloth we bought. It's a little bit too dark, i.e. it doesn't let quite enough light through. So pretty quickly, plants will get leggy 
So we try to put them you know, on the cusp of the shade cloth or it's really easy. It takes about two minutes to kind of scoot it on and scoot it off. That's with one person. So sometimes we'll give them the morning and the afternoon. You know, we don't want to micromanage our greenhouse too much, but during the season when we're germinating a lot of plants, sometimes it just takes a little extra care and extra 10 minutes a day to, to give them some more ideal conditions. Usually we'll move them over into full light you know, five to eight days after germination, depending on how hot it's gonna be, you know, in really hot conditions, sometimes we'll, we'll leave them under that shade for a little while. And then outside here is where we harden plants off. These are lettuces that we've moved out um, just yesterday that will harden off for five or six days and get planted into the ground early next week. If I were to do it again, I would probably get a shade cloth that lets in a little bit more light. I don't know the exact number of that, but I think it's a 60 or a 70% light transmittance. I'd probably get an 80 or a 90. It's just not creating quite as much shade. It's gonna keep things a little bit warmer underneath the shade cloth, but also you could grow for longer underneath it without the plants getting so leggy. Whatever it is, you know, shade cloth is an important part during peak season of a greenhouse. In the past, Sometimes we'd fully remove our plastic just because we didn't actually want the extra heat for say June, July, August and only grow under shade cloth. And then from shade cloth, instead of, we'd move them over still so they weren't under shade cloth at some point, but they'd just be under direct sunlight hardening off or growing not under plastic as soon as they got moved out from under the shade cloth. You can figure out, you know, based on wind, potential rain, how hot it gets in the greenhouse and your potential for airflow all these factors considered, you know, how much of your greenhouse you want shade cloth or plastic. And, you know, on this one, it would be harder to remove the plastic. So we just leave it on and make do with it. Just to review in propagation, we do plants in a greenhouse so that we can control conditions, give them the best little life they can while they're young and transition them into the field ready to grow exponentially uh, in the soil.